Uh, yeah, I just sent it. So let me do this photo shoot and call you back. Freshen up. I'm at Rafa later. One, two, three, check. One, two. All right. This black kid from Harlem in this dominant white sport had New York City skyline painted on the side of my helmet. I was straight New York, and I went out to the Olympic Games, and I was doing it. This time, everyone remembers who took second. Welcome to Harlem. This is where I was born and raised. 20 West 115th Street uh, was the building. And right here where we're standing is where I learned to ride my first bicycle. That's right. Everybody knew Nelson Bells, you know. Yeah. He's always being Central Park riding, you know, constantly training. I remember when you went to the Olympics, what, in 80? 80, 84. Yeah, you, you rode against who? Was, uh, uh, Mark Gorski. Mark Gorski, right. Yeah, yeah. He got the silver, so, right? Yeah, brought the, the medal back, back home to Harlem. <laughs> I climbed this tree as a kid and cried because I wasn't going to get a bike for Christmas. <laughs> and I got the spanking of my life. Growing up as a kid in Harlem, me and the boys, we would come and ride in Central Park lap after lap. We would go uptown, downtown, Wall Street, you know, just on our bikes. So I was a messenger by day. I would go home, get something to eat, come back to Central Park on my road bike, train by night, and race on the weekend. We're going upstairs to the ninth floor to visit Miss Florence. Miss Florence is the oldest resident here in the project housing. <laughs> I mean, he could ride backwards, he could ride standing <laughs> up, he could do just what he wanted with that bike. He could ride that bike like nobody else could. You know, he riding. He had a bike that was too big for him, but he was still fast. He had a, a Peugeot PX10, 25-inch bike. It was too big for him. I've ridden my bike on every single street in Manhattan. At one point or another, more than twice, both directions. Being part of the Toga racing team, it was a pretty unique experience because we would arrive at races. We had matching bikes, matching team van, matching clothing. After a while, everyone wanted to be like us. I knew right out of high school I was going to be a professional cyclist. I already had the magic wand and I was learning how to use it. Once I learned how to use my magic wand, I started kicking everyone while they were down. <laughs> you know what I mean? You think about it, we had fun. Tonight is such a special night. If I was soft, I, was cry I would cry if I was soft. <laughs> we are making world cycling. We're just making world history because if Major Taylor was here to tell the story, it'd be a different time. But I'm here to tell my story and share with you. And tonight's program is a special program with a little added extra because we're here in New York. And two years of being silent, knowing Sean and even Avalo didn't know. Two years ago, we started working on this project. Uh, work with the different individuals at the design team, a lot of midnight calls. If you look closely on the inlay of the fabric, the Thunderbolt from the Toga jersey is actually the NV logo. And it was a lot of artwork and a lot of tweaking to get it right, but it's a true signature item and it's never been done before on the world stage and Rafa is introducing it to you here today. So thanks for that. So and also before I begin, I only got a handful of posters left, so you guys better buy a poster before. You know, we, we, were, we were cool about it. And the tandem racing is defunct now, but it was really cool while it lasted because it was such a fascinating the way I was going. I was, I was good enough that I didn't know I was that good, but it was normal for me to make the Olympic team. And it was pretty expected for me to win a medal. This time you remember who got second. You know, it would have been nice to win a gold for New York and represent, but I got second. <laughs> 